Salutations, everyone. I'm Lord Foreman. Welcome back to another Crusader Kings 3 guide. This time we're going to talk somewhat about advanced title management. Now, if you haven't seen it, I did another guide on surviving partition inheritance. Go watch that one first. This time we're going to talk about some more advanced concepts. So the first one is giving titles to old guys. Now, this is something a lot of people don't get, but if you have a vassal, or a, rather a courtier, if we can find an old guy here, let's see, we can give it to him. And then when he dies, for example, this guy here, if we were to give him a title, one of these, if he dies without an heir, the title will revert to the ruler, us. So that is a very good technique if you're one or two domain over the limit and you can give it to somebody. This guy might be slightly on the young side. I'd almost be more happy with a 55 or 60 year old. But depending on your court size, you can find several old people. Um, you're going to find a lot in your knights, potentially. Uh, you give it to them. They live for a handful of years. Usually if they're old enough, they don't have time to have children. And then when they die, you get the title back, which will allow you to kind of just shuffle titles around, kind of keep putting the title off until you can actually handle taking the title on. It's a good thing to do if your ruler dies and you have an heir who doesn't have the same stewardship skill and he can't manage one title or two titles and it's causing problems with your vassals and levies. Granted away for a short period of time, the odds are you'll probably get it back. Just be careful they don't have heirs, which usually means children. The next one to do is we will talk about grandchildren. So if we look at our ruler here, you'll see that he has two sons, both who have claims to a throne. We're still under um, partition inheritance, confederate partition in this case, which means this guy is entitled to land. Now, if we look at this guy, we cannot give him the kingdom of Great Moravia, which is because under partition, he cannot be given a title he does not stand to inherit. Interestingly enough, this does not apply to grandchildren. So if we go to this guy here, and we were to try giving him this, all we have to give is him a, give him as a county or barony, and then he could theoretically be given a kingdom within our lands, which means when our ruler dies, it would not go to the brother, it would go to the heir of our heir, or the heir of our new ruler, in that case. Um, it can be a very good way of pushing titles down the line of inheritance, Unfortunately, you can't do it directly with children, but you can do it with grandchildren. You just got to make sure those grandchildren are going to be your heir. And that means hopefully they don't die early or some other weird, you disinherit them or they change religions. You just got to keep an eye on it, but it's a pretty awesome technique if you can pull it off. The next one is a very simple one, which I didn't mention in my surviving partition inheritance, which a lot of people complained about, but there was a reason. It is using the disinherit mechanic. So if we go over here to the son of our ruler, for a set amount of prestige and renown, we can disinherit him, which means ta -da, he no longer is heir to that kingdom. Instead, it will go back to his brother. Um, this is a great way of managing your inheritance. It's probably the best way of managing the inheritance prior to getting um, one of the better succession laws, uh, mainly primogeniture. But... The downside with this is that you first off have to be head of a house. So you can't do it if you're if you start the game as the Carolings and you're not the ruler of France at the 867 start. You can't do it as any of the Carolings. Now you can get around that by creating a cadet house. Um, of course, that's a you know a decision over here. Create a, a basically another house. You can do it then, then you'll become head of the house. But you also have to make sure you have enough renowned, which can be very difficult for small rulers. Uh, even rulers of a single kingdom struggle with generating enough renowned. There are ways of generating more, writing books, having higher prestige, taking certain events, having really awesome um, court stuff, as you'll see from my court. Oh, it's not actually showing it here, but from my court, I gained some renowned just from my artifacts being around. Like that one gives me point one a month. Trying to get as multiple, many of those as you can. Multiples of them will help in that. But it can be a bit tricky because you have to remember to do it. And if you have like eight or nine sons in a row, which can happen, uh, you run across the problem of you may not be able to disinherit all of them quickly. Now, 
Also remember, you can restore inheritance by the same method. Restore inheritance. Costs you only a little bit of renown to do back. So by all means, disinherit people. You can always make them get their inheritance back later. Next tip. If you want to manage titles, you can use hooks. Now, this is something that's probably only going to happen if you're going down the intrigue tree here. Um, mainly because intrigue is the way. <laughs> Basically, the odds of you getting hooks without going intrigue are pretty low, except for head of house hooks. So this would allow you to fabricate, you know, your hooks and your schemes and everything. Um, then if you find somebody whose land you want back. Actually, do we have any hooks on this guy? Um, we do have a hook on this guy. So if, for example, we wanted to revoke his title, not going to here, but what we could do is use a hook. It increases the chance of them returning it. However, just be aware there is an act of tyranny and you've got to keep an eye on that because it will just generally hurt everybody, but it's a way to guarantee that you can get titles back. Granting a title to somebody does give you a um, weak hook. You tend to want to get stronger hooks get them back um basically the way you get that is intrigue or knowing secrets it's a very good way of pulling land back into your basically your duchy here for example this guy up here or this countess here owns land that i particularly don't want unfortunately she's not my direct vassal but if i were to force her to be my direct vassal i could then revoke it using hooks and it would be a higher chance of her accepting next one marriage now most people know that if you marriage marry your heir off to someone who's going to inherit lands that when they die when both of them die their oldest child will inherit stuff for example here if i were to marry this grandson to this lady we're not going to because she's much older if they had a son and then she died and he died the son would inherit now this is very dangerous and it can be very powerful first off it's a way to Pull land into your realm, especially if you find a king or a duke with only a daughter. You can start to absorb that into your dynasty, which of course is the goal of the game. But the danger of doing this is, for example, if I did marry this person off to uh, her, right? If they have a child and he is not, he doesn't own land, right? If their child's inherits her lands before she, the child inherits his lands there's a very good chance that first off she'll raise the child so it'll be of a different culture potentially even a different religion or depending on what rank you are versus what rank their title is the your titles that you're hoping to inherit like a duke a duck duchy or something could theoretically pass into someone else's lands so the way around this very simple use your heir that's basically it. If you use your heir, not your heir's heir, so not no grandchildren, but if you use your heir directly, the odds of being able to control that inheritance are significantly higher um, because then it'll pass to your heir's children, your grandchildren rather than great-grandchildren, which is much harder to manage. I do not recommend you marry off brothers or even really sisters to foreign rulers of other kingdoms because they get claims in your title. So there's theoretical chance that they would get their spouse or other relatives to push a claim on your lands or other people within your lands title. So rule of thumb is try not to marry rulers to anybody who's going to inherit something above a county. Duchy is kind of right on the line. I wouldn't risk it with kingdoms and emperor empires unless you're sure you can pull it off and then murder and gain the title. The last one. Um. We can't show it here because we're not Catholic, but if you are Catholic, you have the ability to click on somebody and have them take the vows, which basically removes them from the inheritance. You have to have a very solid relationship with them. It can be done with other religions, but Catholic is the main one. And uh, that removes them from the line of inheritance. It makes them a monk. Now, you can't stop them from being a monk, so they can't get lands and titles, so it's much better off to disinherit them. So the cool thing is, this guy here being disinherited, I could, if he was in my court, um, actually, let's just move forward a day here. Um, whatever. If, let's see if we can get him. Okay, so if he's in our court, right, we can now give him titles freely outside of the normal line of inheritance because he's not part of it. 
and he will stay as part of the Piast dynasty, which of course is the goal to build up your dynasty. So just be aware that's um, a way to kind of manage your titles a bit better. Hopefully that helps you guys with advanced title management. If you have any more questions, by all means, let me know. Ask in the comments. If you do like it, did like the video and you do want to see more of these, please do like, subscribe, or in comment. Um, if you subscribe, make sure to hit the little bell so you get notified when I put stuff out. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.